You made it. Welcome back. Yeah, BEA, beautiful soul, solid soul here. And uh, guys, I've been playing Peacekeeper a lot. And for some reason, I tend to play her solo queue for some reason. And I'm starting to think if I'm actually insane or not. Can you guys let me know? Because I feel like I am. You guys have seen my post on Twitter and my community post that I posted that uh, there's a lot of like disconnects and rage quitters when you solo queue, of course, especially at 2 a.m. One, uh, the matchmaking sucks. And two, it'll be hard for you know, the game to find players to actually join your games, especially when you are triple capped, and the game tends to put you in a game where you are triple capped, so it's always a good time. Thanks, Ubisoft. And remember, guys, it's not Ubisoft's fault, they're a small indie company, and JC's jacket has control of the entire For Honor dev studio at the moment. So, don't blame, don't, don't blame Ubisoft or the dev team. Blame JC's jacket. But, anyways, I digress. I've been playing a lot of Peacekeeper solo queue, and I, I will say that Peacekeeper is strong, but that's only if you are hyper focused and have a lot of game knowledge and game sense. If you don't have that aspect in For Honor, you're not gonna do that well with her. There's a lot of peacekeepers that I fight against that easily expose themselves to giggity in a lot of ways, and it's it's in bad ways too. Like there's a there's a time and a place to you know to do that, and I would I would not recommend you to do that in For Honor for the most part. So that's why I put her in my tier list. Like uh, I put her, I think I put her B tier or C tier. I think it's B tier. And I say to people, do not play her unless you are pretty decent at the game. Like, you have good reads, good parries. Personally, you don't need to be parrying too much, but you do need to be a good blocker and understand characters' mix-ups. Because if you don't know how another character functions, you're not going to do the well with her because she's all about matchup knowledge and 1v1s. In team fights, you have to play incredibly safe and know what characters will probably do make reads on that and try to punish them for it because your forward dodge heavy is very good can be easily abused but if people are watching out for that even if you target swap and uh, go back to the original person that you're trying to focus it's just, they're just going to block it or they're just going to parry it and, and punish you especially if it's character that has a full block you you definitely want to be very careful in that regard but for peacekeeper i enjoy playing her because you play her as like a secret assassin and there's no real character that kind of plays like this that like, sure you have shaman um, and Shinobi, but those characters, uh, they work differently, in my opinion. Shinobi, specifically, even though he's a ninja, and he's like the strongest character, one of the strongest characters in the game, probably like freaking top three, in my opinion, he just works differently because there's so many things that he can do, but there's also things that he can't do that Peacekeeper can, and, and it's really weird. It's hard to explain it, but uh, I think it's because Peacekeeper has very high damage values very high damage values to clutch your games. Whereas Shinobi is like in a really a really elusive character and he excels much more so in defense because of his dodge bashes and his dodge cancels than pure offense compared to uh, Peacekeeper when it comes to 1v1 potential. But he can be punished severely when you don't know how to play him correctly. And the thing about Shinobi is that of course he has like ridiculously strong moves, good deflex um, and really good uh, punishes when it comes to uh, ganks. So if you're stuck in a 2v1 with him and your teammate knows how to gank, you win the game. So with Peacekeeper, I, I, trend, I tend to like find 1v1s and separate the teammate that uh, the enemy that I'm fighting against because it's so freaking fun to solo them and kill them as quickly as possible and then go clear mid lane because she has a mid lane character. She's supposed to be taking care of the mid lane as much as possible, but you should also be back capping. Um, when I see my teammate getting 2v1, it depends on what characters they're getting 2v1 by. If it's like a Magi and a Varangian, and then my teammate's using like maybe a Peacekeeper, a Warden, you know, a very low tier character that requires you to be very good at the game, and I know that the teammates aren't good at the game, I will not help them. I will watch them die. You wanna know why? Because if you go there and help them and your teammate dies, now you're stuck in the 1v2 and you're not gonna get any help. So, <laughs> and nobody's gonna help you. Yeah, and the reason is is because they don't have enough time to come help you. Your teammates are probably doing something else. It's all about situational awareness. You have to be thinking constantly. Um, and, and if you're playing this game with your brain turned off, I, I would not recommend playing Peacekeeper because you will suffer tremendously. She requires you to use a little bit of your noggin. And of course, we are, we are For Honor players. The ones that do though, God bless, God bless your soul. Um, you will do incredibly well with Peacekeeper. Solo queue. If you're playing with a team, like I said before, a bajillion times, you're gonna do very well. She's she's very strong when it comes to team play, and she can help peel for your teammates very easily and very high damage too. But when it comes to helping teammates in solo queue, I tend to be very careful on who I choose to help. Like I said before, you have to be careful on who you want to help if you're fighting a, a very good team that's also solo queue too. If it's solo queue gaming, you have a chance. If it's four stack gaming, 
it's it's Joe over. There's no way you win. I'm sorry. I'm sorry to say this, but I, I'm sure most of you guys know. And and that, I think that's why a lot of people rage quit too. I read in my comments um, and my previous videos that a lot of people rage quit because they're fighting force deck. And of course, like I say, you're not gonna win those games nine times out of ten. The only times you win those games. It's if you have solo queue players that are also very good players. You'll remember their names. You'll be like, oh, this guy. Yeah, he's a very solid player. He knows what he's doing. Uh, he can handle his own in anti-ganks. He knows how to stall and all that good stuff. Then you can rely on him in team fights and in uh, ganks situations. And you want to help him. And so if it's like two other players that don't know what the heck they're doing, but there's one person that does, you always want to come assist him. You always want to take the mid lane. You can also stall potentially because she did get move improved hitboxes on her heavy attacks and her zone which have been very helpful to me especially in these a lot of these situations you notice that my zone hitbox is very nice my heavy is also very good There's, the light attacks also have decent hitboxes too uh, there's some fights that i just can't finish off and that's when you need your teammate to come help you so if you do find a good teammate that's great but if you're solo queuing and you don't have a good teammate the best thing to do in my opinion is clear mid lane and try to see where all the enemy is located if there's like three on like a certain point and there's one holding mid lane or there's just one on the uh, farthest point that you can probably capture and duel you be be careful because if you go to a point and duel him and you can't finish him off fast enough you have to know if the other team is going to assist him and gank you because if you can't finish him off fast enough with both hands you are screwed because your teammates are probably going to go back and feed at the other point where they just die because they want to get revenge and they're like oh they're low so let's go over there and try to finish them off okay but so in reality, you have to be very careful on deciding who you want to actually uh, beat in a duel. Because if you can't beat them, you don't have your tier 2s, you don't have your tier 3 or your tier 4, then you will severely lose that fight. You have to be incredibly careful and smart about your playstyle. And I think that's why a lot of there's a lot of Peacekeeper players that enjoy this aspect of Botter because it requires you to use your brain and strategize. You have to have certain stratagems like, okay, I have my tier 3, I can uh, finish off people really quickly with my uh, bleed daggers, and it does a crap load of damage. If they decide to even go for a parry or a dodge, I get them with the GB. Triple kidney stabs, goodbye to your health. You can kiss your mama goodbye because you're gonna die in the next hit because you're in a chain offense now. A chain offense is very scary if you don't react, if you, well, if you don't block or freaking 366 MS dagger cancel, which has been improved significantly. I can't parry this at all. Uh, to be fair, I really haven't fought that much Peacekeepers um, a as a Peacekeeper player. When I'm, pl when I'm playing Peacekeeper, if I'm playing any other character, she's really no issue at all. She's zero. Zero problems in every single game I play, even solo queue. If I'm with a stack like a bunch of boys that I'm playing with, uh, my community members and all that stuff, you be a beautiful souls. She's, she's worthless. I, I do not care about her. I can just external her for days. But if there's a good Peacekeeper, and I think I've only fought like maybe a couple of good Peacekeepers in uh, my Dominion games. Like there's like maybe one or two um, that actually plays the game is what I'm saying in, in the matchmaking. Like not stacked up 24-7. When you're stacked, it, it doesn't count. <laughs> Honestly, it does not count uh, because you, you have a team to assist you in every single aspect. Matchmaking solo queue gaming is a totally new different experience compared to like stack gaming stack gaming The game is like on easy mode. There's no challenge at all when you when you stack like I know you want to play with your friends and whatnot But at the same time, it, there's no challenge whatsoever unless you're finding like really really good players uh, But most of the time that's not the case uh, You'll have like warlords doing the forward top heavy you'll have shamans doing the forward dodge <laughs> headbutts 24 7 and then you'll have a lot of wardens like I love seeing wardens but I only like them when they're on the other team because they're very easy to uh, exploit. Whereas if they're on my team, there's so many games where I have two wardens and they just get their ass kicked. Like nine times out of ten, they're getting their ass stomped. They're just bending themselves over. It's like, oh, I have a new execution. It's totally, it's totally not a universal execution at all. Not at all. And I have the new skin. Fantastic. I look be a beautiful while I get hammered by hyper armor. Dodge cancel recoveries and roaches and 30 damage freaking finisher heavy by Roche. It's like disgusting. So, Warden players, it's kind of the same thing as Peacekeeper. Those two characters, you need to be thinking a lot, but I think I think Peacekeeper is honestly, she is kind of a better character for me personally to carry my games. Warden feels a little bit more restrictive because uh, he doesn't have dodge cancel recoveries. And his uh, chain pressure, it, I don't think it's as good because you have to take a long time to do your mix-ups. Uh, whereas Peacekeeper, 
I think she just does better with the fast light attack. The 366 MS a light attack just feels stronger, especially against like matchmaking players. But against high level players, I think the Vortex is so much better, but uh, I think Peacekeeper just has that edge when it comes to people who aren't, you know, their brains aren't turned on. Even though they pick like an S tier characters, you have to respect what they do. And I think the fast chain light attacks come into clutch more often than just, you know, Warden do the double light into an underreactive shoulder bash, but it takes longer. And if you miss the level one, well, you're gonna get freaking guard broken for a ton of damage. Whereas Peacekeeper can have a lot of um, utility with their fast light attacks, her raw heavies. Warden has a great uh, unblockable heavy finisher, sure. But uh, it's just, I don't think it's as good. Like, she's, I've, I've had a lot of good results with Warden, but for solo queue matchmaking, I feel like Peacekeeper, I've just been doing so much better. What have your guys' experiences been with it? But remember, I've been playing this game for a really long time, like seven years, and uh, I have a ton of matchup knowledge. And uh, I, I'm, I'm pretty patient when I'm playing, like, off, uh, off stream or just playing by myself, relaxed, in a relaxed state at like 2 a.m. at 3 a.m. or just, you know, any time at all. But to be fair, I'm, I'm pretty relaxed at, at nighttime, you know? That's like a very good time to play For Honor, in my opinion, besides the fact that uh, a ton of people are rage quitting and you get like the worst matchmaking because not enough players or Ubisoft just doesn't care and there's no matchmaking at all. Especially since you're probably destroying one of the, <laughs> the devs that are playing the games. So I feel like that's gotta be the only way, uh, the, the only uh, true uh, truth because uh, once you start getting like the worst matchmaking ever, uh, the game thinks you can carry like these. Th I had this game where there's two rev zeros, and there's no way we win that game. No way at all. The other team had like three rep uh, 200s or 300s, or something like that, and then they had like one like rep 20 or 30 or something like that. But the I think they were playing the heat to carry, and it's like, are you serious right now? <laughs> I, I can't win this. It's it's unwinnable. The only way you win this is if you have an amazing duo with you, like you're actually in a stack. Uh, but we, we, I didn't have that. I was solo queuing. So that's solo queue gaming, though, of course. One more really important thing about Peacekeeper is that when I'm playing her as like this assassin uh, type character, I really want to get in and get out as fast as possible. I don't want to overstay. And I think a lot of problems with Peacekeeper players and pe people in general when they're playing this game is that uh, they overextend way too much, especially, especially in the mid lane. It, it's it's probably the most egregious thing. For a lot of players. I've, I told you guys in my 4,000 hours of For Honor video um, that you should not overstand your stay when it comes to the mid lane. Try to take it before you team fight, and especially be careful when you think the mid lane is yours, but it's not because as soon as there's more enemies or more minions that overpower your minions, your minions will start to run away, and then you won't have any more backup. Especially if someone pops Inspire or Battlecry, it's Joe over, everyone just runs away. So you gotta be really careful. Th this is important for Peacekeeper especially, because your team fighting capabilities and anti-gang capabilities are not that powerful. They're basically non-existent. They're really bad. Good hitbox is sure, but what are you gonna do when someone's bleeding? Uh, people can just heavy you in the back, or uh, full block you and, and your dodge cancel recoveries are not that great in comparison to like shinobi and orochi those guys are very loose and, and pirate uh, they have big hitboxes for dodge attacks whereas peacekeeper she's incredibly vulnerable so if you miss uh, your dodge attack and it doesn't connect with anybody someone could easily guard break you on your dodge cancel recoveries or you just stay there and take it and hit get hit by a bash or something you know so you have to make that read and play very smart so basically don't overextend especially when it comes to the mid lane and don't overextend when it comes to trying to duel somebody on a certain point because you want to make sure that if someone is going to get back up you don't take the initiative you play pretty safe you want to play elusive you want to be like hey i'm over here come push me towards my minion lane and take a bunch of chip damage because chip damage or the damage that the minions do is very powerful just make it so that you know they're very scared to come attack you and remember peacekeeper has very good damages so if you dodge bashes or hit people with a dodge attack she does a lot of damage the health swing is in her favor you have to be you have to kind of respect her when you start doing bashes towards her and start opening her up with your bashes because if she makes good reads on you, you're losing a lot of health just by missing a bash. And so that kind of makes offense bad when Peacekeeper is very good at defense. So after Peacekeeper has essentially, you know, finished 1v1ing somebody, you basically look around and see, oh, okay, so where do I need to go next? Can I clear mid lane real, real fast? and go help my teammates for the secure the kill, or do I wanna just stay on point? So that's where you kinda of have to determine what the best play is. Are there enough people holding the other point? Are your teammates just getting their ass kicked? Should you just hold this point 
and try to get your renown as high as possible so you can get your tier 3 and your tier 4 to finish off people who try to 1v1 you at the point. So there's a lot of um, there's a lot of decision making uh, with this character and, and if you don't have good um, game sense you're not going to do that well with her because if you start going into the team fight when there's like a bajillion people there and then you get back capped and then you get stuck in a 1v4, 1v3 situation, yeah, that's not very that's not very good for you. And it's not really cash money because your KD is going to go down, then your mental is going to go down, and then your teammates are going to be like, oh god, our carry just died, so there's nothing we can do now. So your best bet is trying to kill as much people as possible, but also hold your points, because if you don't hold your points, what's your teammates going to do? You don't really want to rotate with your teammates, because you don't know if they're going to rotate. Uh, that you don't know if they're going to hold the points. So there's really a lot of expectations from your teammates if you're a solo queue player. And that's the thing, you don't really want to expect so much out of people. You shouldn't assume that they're going to play really well. You should assume that they're all bad. I had a warmonger confirm one of my finisher heavies with the guard break, but I didn't let it fly. And then, you know, of course, if you don't let it fly, the guard break feeds more revenge than a heavy attack. And at that point, I don't think I saw her the entire game. <laughs> Rightfully so, because like, I know how to confirm attacks, but I don't want to do it because it'll feed revenge if two guard breaks bounce off the other person. That's, 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 that is game winning right there. You will lose the game because of that mistake. And that's why you can't expect everyone to confirm for you. The only time people confirm for you are, is if you're in really high level lobby and you're fighting another stack. That's just how it is. Yes, of course. That means you're going to have to watch your teammates die. And some people are just so unaware that they're dying all the time and they will get like eight to 10 deaths. And that's not really your problem. Your problem is holding points and getting your KD up, okay? Getting your KD up, that's probably the most important thing because one, you get more renown, all right, more renown, and you're holding points for your team so that you guys can actually heal and maybe uh, help your teammates if there's a good player on your team so they can heal and come back and you can help defend it if someone tries to invade, you know? So that's really important for Peacekeeper. She, she is going to be the support. She's going to be your therapist, okay? She's going to be there <laughs> when your team is getting destroyed and you're having a mental breakdown. And be like, okay, wow, this Peacekeeper actually knows what they're doing. Um, I'll just hope that they can win all their duels and I'll come help them afterwards. So if someone expects that you're going to be a very good player, they're going to they're gonna help you out in return, okay? You'll, you'll meet a lot of good people, I promise you, by doing that. And for some reason, I keep forgetting to use Peacekeeper's Soft Faint uh, because if you use a heavy attack, uh, heavy finisher or heavy neutral, you can soft faint dodge out of it. And there's a lot of players that don't expect you to do the forward dodge heavy after an unblockable finisher heavy. And it can mix people up from time to time. You definitely don't want to be doing it all the time. But it's a pretty cool mix up in my opinion because it saves you a little bit on stamina. Does some chip damage if you needed to. Uh, but personally, I haven't really been using it or incorporating that much into my mix ups. I think it'd be kind of nice to use it from time to time because it can definitely surprise people. But I think just an unblockable into a faint light attack to go into your chip uh, and get to your chain pressure or just using the guard break or softening dagger cancel once again. Uh, she already has like a lot of good utility already when it comes to, you know, opening people up. And you don't really need to do, the, you need to do like some softening mix up like that when it comes to the forward dodge heavy. I do want to incorporate it a little bit more because it can definitely surprise opponents. Another really important aspect right now about Peacekeeper is that if you are able to back cap, you should do that as much as possible. And the thing is, you don't need to actually stay there and hold the point. I personally would only stay there if I know my teammate is going to come help me afterwards. Because if you stay there and back cap while your home point is taken, this is this has happened to me many times, where if your home point is taken and there's two good players there that can hold the point very well, and you lost there once already, and your teammate's going in there, they don't know how to gank or team fight and whatnot, you avoid that point altogether. You go to the mid lane, clear it, or if they're always contesting it, you avoid the mid lane, you go back cap all the way there, beat the 1v1, because there's most likely going to be two people at your home point and then one in mid lane, or three at your home point, that's how it always goes. And then once you win the 1v1 at, your, at the enemy home point, you take the mid lane, and then you go back to the enemy home point. And if your teammate, that's really good, is going to assist you there, you hold that point the entire time. The key thing to do is to split up the good players so that you can 1v1 them and beat them up so that your bad teammates can hopefully win against the one good enemy team that's holding the um, your home point. Because you're not going to be an anti-gank all the time with the much bullshit we have in this game, right? So the best thing to do 
in this scenario, especially as a Peacekeeper player, since you're really good at rotations, you're fast. Uh, if you're running stealth, that's even better. But I think Bounty Hunter is probably better in, in general because if you're bleeding uh, against like a lot of uh, bleed characters like Nobushi and other Peacekeepers or Warmongers, you're going to want a little bit more health after a kill. I honestly can't tell you how many times we've gotten more points or even out the scoreboard after back capping and taking mid lane. Because fighting in your home point and not winning team fights against good players, it just means that you're going to lose the game and also feed them renown and decrease your KD ratio, right? Because you want to have a good KD ratio and you also want to be doing something with, you know, high renown clearing the mid lane and back capping because it forces them to split up and then your teammates and yourself can anti-gank and team fight and win that fight over there. Because you can bully the other bad teammates on the enemy team while the good good enemy fights and beat up, beats up your noobs. <laughs> that's, that's basically my thought process on it and it's worked really well, especially for like solo queue matchmaking uh, because there's always a, a plethora of of uh, really bad players and there's like a bunch of good players too. So you have to be very careful. And sometimes there's more good players on the enemy team than your team. And that does suck, but there's some ways to win it. And this is one of the ways that I use a lot and abuse. Otherwise, you're honestly just going to suffer and watching your teammates feed a bunch of revenge and use neutral dodge attacks in a 2v1 situation. <laughs> I've seen so many people do that. I don't know why people think uh, neutral dodge attacks are openers, because they're not. They're, they're free parries. They honestly are. And I'm not saying I'm winning all my games, but I'm having a lot of good games, even though I'm losing. You know what that feeling? It's like you're doing very well, but your team just can't handle it. And, and that's okay. And that's honestly okay. Like, it's not always about winning. Yeah, it's fun to win, and it feels great to win. Like, don't even get me wrong. I love winning. I feel like I'm very competitive in that sense, but uh, Peacekeeper, she's not a character you can really carry the game with. She has to have some other characters to assist her. I, like I've said before, i would never seen a game where there's just this one Peacekeeper who's like destroying everybody, okay? Like maybe in a blue moon, you'll see one, but the consistency of Peacekeeper carrying games is non-existent. The only person that carries games is like, that I see is like me who goes into the lobby solo queue and be like, okay, this guy is cooking right now. He is cooking. He's holding down the fort. He's getting these nasty 1v1s. He's killing the entire team with a very high KD ratio. You know, uh, and, and as a peacekeeper, that's pretty rare. It, it does happen from time to time, but you need very good teammates, like 99% of the time. There's a lot of games where peacekeepers will have like a high KD ratio, also Roji's, but that's because they have very good teammates to assist them. But when it comes to like a carry character by themselves without the team, it's incredibly rare. Like you'll see a BP who carries the team without his teammates. Those characters, Warlord, BP, Orochi, um, Afira, uh, those characters, no surprise that they're in the top of the leaderboards and they're doing incredibly well. But Peacekeeper, you never ever see that. And remember, I'm talking about the consistency of the character doing incredibly well. She requires you to be at basically 110% almost every single game and if you're not 110 percent you make some terrible reads you are going to get cooked i i can guarantee you that much you need to be learning what your teammate is going to do is he going to gank for you is he does he just do normal light attacks 24 7 do you have to wait him out do you have to run back and then go help your team afterwards you know like what's the plan here what what should you be doing um what can and what you can't you do like this this character requires you to do so many reads it's insane it's actually insane. And, and that's what I love about her too, when you use her. She's also one of the last characters that have incredibly smooth animations. Very unique animations too, and I, and I love her for that. I, I honestly do. Because her executions are all so good. Her emotes are fantastic too. I love the one where she freaking cuts her own neck off. My goodness, I wish she would do that to me. Why not? But, you know, fantastic executions, great fashion and just an overall unique character. And there's not that much of those in my opinion right now, especially since Ubisoft loves giving every single tool to all these characters. It's great that she kind of didn't get a bash, she doesn't need it, but I still think she needs quality of life changes to her kit. Just because I can do incredibly well with her, most of my games I play with her, doesn't mean that the character doesn't need some touches, you know? There's a lot of good matchups that she has, but there's also a lot of bad ones. And with those bad matchups, they're usually the S tier characters, you have to play really defensively, have good reactions and reads, um, and 
play correctly when it comes to um, situational awareness because if you don't have situational awareness or game sense she's really going to be hard to use and you're going to suffer a lot but i've been having a crap ton of fun with her and even as a solo queue player you'll, you'll have more fun with her if you're playing with friends who can confirm for you or you know peel for you from time to time but I, honestly i really like playing her solo queue and uh, playing her as a ninja or secret assassin of a noble of sorts and you know stabbing people and taking them out one by one and leaving the premises when a three three guys just show up because i'm not going to be there all right like i would love to anti-gank as peacekeeper consistently but there's a reason why a uh, ferrum doesn't play peacekeeper a shit ton he plays much more s tier characters or a tier characters that can handle their own and do a little bit of anti-ganking themselves. And that's also why whenever you get beat by a Peacekeeper, you definitely feel like you got outplayed. Um, I know some people, especially the old gen players, they don't like Peacekeeper because you definitely can get light spam by her and really overwhelmed by her offense in comparison to other characters like Warden, where Warden is pretty darn strong at high level, but a Peacekeeper is more stronger in mid level because most players can't uh, defend against her chain offense. They can't parry neutral lights or chain lights and make really nasty reads. And so, yeah, I get it. You guys are having a frustrating time. But Peacekeeper uh, against like a decently high rep player or decently a uh, good player is going to respect a good Peacekeeper at the end of the day. That's just how it is. Any Peacekeeper I fight that you can hold her own, I'm like, oh, damn, um, can I can I get like a, can I hit your DMs? You know what I'm saying? Hit me up. Let's go, baby. <laughs> but I uh, hope you guys enjoyed the video. I'm going to be making another, uh, it's going to be a video where I talk about um, each character what nerfs and buffs that they need it'll probably be another long one so if you guys like that and like what i do here uh, go ahead and leave a like and uh, comment down below on what you guys think of peacekeeper right now as you guys have been playing her if you've been having a lot of luck or just having terrible games as usual you know let me know thank you so much and i hope you guys have a bea beautiful day i'll see you guys in the next video bye bye see you later